It's the new 106.7 My Talker Radio. Now, back to a kinder, gentler, Curtis Wright on the beat. And I promise, I'm going to be kinder and I'm going to be gentler. He's in studio. He made it. I think he figured out that part of our whole plan is to make it so people can't find us, especially liberals, here at 106.7 FM My Talker Radio. And I'm glad that he made it. And... Uh, Gosh, you know, I have to tell folks before this interview starts that this is a person who has been part of our community for a long time, uh, actually keeping our community safe for a long time, and now involved in education, uh, and not much retired here, but in education, and someone who's well known, and um, I just, uh, you know, skipped a groove here in uh, just remembering his background, and uh, it's going to be a very unique uh, interview here. He's running for New Hanover County Commissioner. His name is Dave Conklin. He says in his material, public safety and education come first. The cornerstone of government is keeping people safe and educating our young people. Amen to that. Good morning, Dave, and welcome. Well, Curtis, thank you for having me, and I apologize for messing you <laughs> no, up. No, no, that's okay. Now, now, you know, again, I have to apologize. 40-year uh, law enforcement career uh, beginning in Washington, D.C., but you were here. Uh, a Wilmington Police Department, uh, Deputy Chief of Police, That's correct. and uh, now at Cape Fear Community College, you're the Chair of the Public Service Department. Wow, I mean, you're, I mean, uh, it just, uh, you've done a lot here in this community and in this region. Well, it's, and it's, I think what I'm trying to continue is, uh, this is the first time in my career that I've actually had an opportunity to uh, run for public office because the previous positions I had uh, either weren't conducive to running for public office when you're working shifts and weekends and so forth, and, mm -hmm. or they flat out uh, were forbid from running from public, public office. But uh, I've always enjoyed politics. I enjoy the debate. Uh, we don't always agree on everything, but I think it's important to put everybody to put their ideas out, and then let the best ones come to the top. So when I had an opportunity uh, for the commissioner's position, one of the things I, I honestly looked at is, 65% of New Hanover County's budget, state, federal, local, goes to public safety and education. But I guarantee you, you'll have trouble counting any teachers, cops, firefighters, EMS that ever represent us on these elected boards. And I just think we need a new perspective when so much of what we spend uh, goes to these particular areas. And I think I have a little bit of a unique background that it, uh, both in education and obviously oh, law yeah. enforcement. You know, and, and this is one of the things that I've just been adamant about for years. That where you start, again, where you say in your statement of the materials you're handing out, public safety and education come first. And it's a cornerstone of government. We, we've, you know, when we have these fights in our communities, and, commi and, and as a county commissioner, you're right there. You're the first line with w Wilmington City uh, Council, same thing. This is where it starts, and, or, and this is where it gets, can get off track, and that is what is the role of government and what isn't the role. We fight in our community about crime. We fight in our community because we have to go borrow money to fix potholes. We fight in our community because our sewer system doesn't work. We fight in our community that there's something wrong in the school district. Well, take care of that first and stop spending all this money. And you know as well as I do, Dave, that's the problem. That's why we don't and can't take care of other things because we spend our money and our resources somewhere where it's not supposed to be. And I, I, that's how I feel. But you hit the nail on the head, Curtis. Is one of the things I've always believed is government should be limited in what they should do. They should do well. And, uh, and I think we have taken on the role of educating our children, which I think is, is imperative because I think education ties into crime because I'll guarantee we don't lock up a whole lot of college graduates. Mm -hmm. But we do lock up a lot of people that have been dropped out of the school system. Educating them is the key to, to bringing the community up. And, you know, we see that on the streets all the time, and, and we advocate. We like to work with the, the, the schools. But it's, it's like, and I know this has nothing to do with local politics, but it's like Obamacare. When I used to argue, I said, we can't afford it. It's, I don't care whether it's a great idea. We're already trillions of dollars in debt with commitments we've already made, why would we add another one? One of the other things that I'm seeing, and, and you have a unique perspective, and by the way, 
it does have to do with running for county commissioner because you're the first line. You're the start where it all begins. You know, um, this, this wobbling of should law enforcement, and as a county commissioner, you're going to be, uh, you are going to be responsible for funding law enforcement. Now, yes, we have a sheriff, but you're going to fund it. You're funding public education, even though there's a board of education over there. Um, this wobbly, you know, thing going on of should law enforcement be like therapists? And, and should we be spending money through police departments and sheriff's departments on, on social programs? You know, my mind is you do it law enforcement and let the others do their thing. I mean, I don't think it's good to mix all this stuff up. Well, a, a perfect example, to be honest with you, is years, a couple of years ago we got a grant. We had a reentry employee to talk to uh, that as part of a program. Well, the reason we took it on was because nobody else would. In reality, it should have been somebody in corrections dealing with that kind of program. But too many times what happens in our community is we have constantly don't know where to put it, so we'll give it to the police. We see the problems. We know what can work. But nobody else wants to be out there 2 o'clock in the morning. Nobody else wants to be out there at 11 o'clock on Saturday night. They'd rather be off, you know, doing something else. But isn't it important to keep that, you know, it's almost like in the investment industry, the mistake we made was breaking down the wall between banks and investment firms. Isn't it, isn't it the same thing? You've got to keep that wall yeah. because there has to be this perception, not that law enforcement are the big bad guys, you know, but in fact, this is what they do, and you violate the law, and you're going to be, yeah. you know, punished. The, the best thing, you know, in law enforcement, what we do well is interact with people. What we do well is preventing crime. What we do well is investigate crime. We are not social therapists, and I agree with you. Now, we, we need to understand those aspects, but I think if we can concentrate on law enforcement and other people open up gyms at night, and if that's mm -hmm. what you want to do, uh, that's what they do, and I agree with you. I, th I think focus our funding on enforcing the law and, uh, and keeping our folks working on that particular aspect. And that's what, you know, whether it's city council, county commissioners, you set the policies. You are the one, you're the, the, the board mm -hmm. that establishes what we're going to do. And, uh, and I think it's important to get somebody that's actually been out there at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, walk in the beat when it's dark and it's cold and it's wet. And uh, I did that in D.C. many a night. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about, you know, again, county commissioner responsibilities here. You talk about education. Um, we spend a lot of money on education. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a huge part of our, our, our local and our state budget for sure. But, you know, I, you know, and I have been, since my days as going to college to be a teacher and teaching in college when I was going to college, um, an advocate for public education. But, I, you know, I'm starting to lose it, and I have said to my listeners, I think I, now I wouldn't, if I were a parent, I wouldn't put my kids in public school because, you know, when we spend all the money and we go through all the, this that we've been fighting since decades and decades, and then you find out a 53% proficiency level, we got that. I mean, you can't. Um, this comes back to what you just said. You cannot have a safe and productive society if you if one out of two of your kids is just plain ignorant. How can that? It cannot work. And so, does a county commissioner in handing out the money should the county be demanding more back from the school board in in results or or something I, uh, in, in accountability? I, I, I think, like I said, it's, you know, you hear different issues about whether it's Common Core or whether it's the uh, uh, under the Bush program, the one child left behind. The whole thing, what they were trying to do is have measurable results. And I understand we get a lot of complaints about measuring, but I don't know how else we're going to figure out if we're doing our job. I, I mean, what are police departments held accountable to? The hell to crime rates. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is what it is, what it is, and we have to we have to follow that. The same thing. The schools. I don't understand this. Why we have such difficulty of why, uh, trying to measure what the results are of of our teaching? So I'm an advocate of let's see some results, and as a result of that, could open up funding and. And, make, and then make your decisions reward or expand. Well, come right back. Uh, Dave Conklin uh, running for New Hanover County Commissioner on uh, the 
Republican side. And don't forget, tonight at 6.30, doors open at Jungle Rapids, another opportunity to meet the candidates uh, and lots of candidates running for county commissioner. We'll continue our discussion here on The Beat. We'll be right back. The one that just drives you crazy. Driving will never be the same. Curtis Wright is on The Beat, the new 106.7 My Talker Radio. Pay attention, folks. And if you don't know much about Dave Conklin, then uh, you'll be there tonight, Dave. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Uh, at the GOP meeting. Doors open at 6.30 at Jungle Rapids. And he's an uh, opportunity for you to shake his hand, look him in the eye, ask questions tonight uh, of him when you see him. And it's important for all the candidates. Major challenges facing uh, New Hanover County. Of course, I, I'm sure that you've sat down and said, okay, uh, if I win, uh, or as a candidate, you should say, when I win. When I win, these are the things that are going to be the, the, you know, this is the things I want to affect top priorities for me. I, I think the biggest thing I want to see, Curtis, is we need to do something about making sure we take care of the current employees we have. Because the turnover rate, and whether it's the teachers, and there's a big thing in Wake County about the numbers uh, teachers are losing, uh, when you don't give somebody raises for six, seven years, we are losing talent. We're not just losing bodies. And the difficulty part, is, and just from the law enforcement, I'll give you that side, it takes us probably two to three years to replace that body. We can put a, another person there, but by the time we train them, get them up to a proficiency level, you talk about two to three years. Same thing in the teachers. I don't ever want to add another person until we take care of the group we have. And I think that's always been one of the mistakes that I've always seen that administrators and all is, and even politicians, we need more cops, we need more teachers. I said, why don't we take care of the ones we have, keep them, and then, that, then we'll look at that beyond that. Because one of the reasons we constantly are short, because they're always going and we're always replacing people. Uh, young people are great, new in the job, but the bottom line is they make mistakes. And that's, that's uh, when, you know, we have the problems out there. They, they, it takes a long time. We used to say it takes a good five years for a police officer to really become proficient at what they do, to really understand the job and how to go about talking to people. But, but don't, Dave, but don't you see, and I, you know, again, I'm critic, uh, a critic of a lot of government workers, in whether it's but local, state, and federal. Mm -hmm. Don't you see a dramatic difference in the structure inside first uh, organizations of first responders and the other government agencies? I mean, look, a cop doesn't do his job. A fireman doesn't do his job. An EMS person doesn't do his job. There it is, and it's not tolerated. Mm -hmm. the, the problem that I have is that's all great, but, you know, we have to bring some of those types of performance matrix, whatever you call it, um, and the things we do in pri the private sector, that everything we do, every cost on a person, everything we train them to do has to come back to protecting the taxpayer's money. And I don't see that over here. I'm sorry. I've been yeah. doing this for 20 years, and I don't see it. Yeah. I mean, isn't that true? It, There's well, and again, that's what we, we talked about earlier about measurable results, about if we're going to you know, have teachers and we want to make sure that we're getting the results, we've got to figure out why 53% is an unacceptable proficiency level. Like I said, if we're losing one out of two people, uh, we got problems in society, and like I said, we see them out there. Hey, let me ask you a quick for interjecting, but how many of those people that are leaving do you think are actually the better than the ones who are staying? Well, I'm, I've interviewed many of them, and two-thirds of the ones leaving are really good. See, that's, and I'm, I agree with you. And, and, and I agree. That's, so that shows you more of the problem. Yeah. That it's actually a, 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 there's a systemic problem with the organization, with the process, or whatever you would want to call it. You've been a manager, deputy chief. I mean, you understand all that. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, part of the role of any administrator is, is making the job uh, an enjoyable job on top of being compensated. And, uh, you know, when I, when I was down at Wilmington PD, when I was with the state police, uh, that was always one of the challenges we have is we never are going to be 
the best paid. We're never going to be, you know, you're not going to make a banker or a realtor's kind of salary. But there's more intangibles to the job. And I do think sometimes that's what we're missing. Uh, and we need to bring some of that back. The, the, the stuff that made me want, want to be a cop. I loved being on the streets. It was fun. You know, it was fun meeting people. It was fun getting bad guys off the street. That's what we enjoyed doing. And that was a lot of the satisfaction. I think sometimes we're missing some of that. Uh, and we need to figure out ways to get some of these things. It's not all monetary. I agree with you. There, it's not, we can, but there are other things we can do to show gratitude, to show people that we support them. And I, and I tell you, this community has been very supportive of the police, very supportive of the teachers. Let, let's talk a little bit about, you know, and I've watched this over a 20-year period. We have good intentioned people that want to be on a uh, county commission or, a, or the city council. And then there's the professional staff, quote, mm -hmm. the professional staff. And you'll talk, I've interviewed people running for the, your same position you're running for. And I'll ask them questions. Well, I don't really, I asked, uh, I've asked somebody uh, who was on a board for a number of years about this particular issue. Well, I don't really know. Well, shouldn't the county commissioners absolutely know what's going on? Yeah. Shouldn't they be asking the questions? Do we, how many people do we really have? Do we need these people? How are they being managed? Did you follow through on my, our directives? Yeah. That kind of thing? Uh, well, that's exactly. One of the things is, I was always taught early on, the budget is your policy. That's where you control and you ensure that what you want done is carried out. So one of the things you've got to do is to make sure that you tell them this is what we need done, this is the funding you have for it, now show me the result of it. Because like I said, can I tell you what makes the sewer system work? No. i got to depend upon somebody to give me some professional opinion about what needs what needs to be done and then what are the options open to us the same thing they're dealing with with the landfill issue because none of us are experts on the landfill but we need to depend upon that but I don't want one option I mm -hmm. said give me what the, the variables are give me what we can do now what the ramifications are I do think sometimes with government we have a tendency to be a little short-sighted. We say what takes us to tomorrow instead of what takes us to next year, what takes us to five years and ten years. That's one of the things that... Uh, but again, see, maybe because my, my career has been about, uh, you know, business strategy and long-range planning, is that's because we're spending our money, I think, Dave, on things we're not supposed to, so the only option is to think short term, and that's one of my questions I was going to ask you. I see that both the city and the county have been in the mode of crisis management by bond, I call it. In other words, well, we'll just patch it up, and if all hell breaks loose in three or four years, you're seeing it again with the city of Wilmington, with the roads again, what, four years, and now we've got another $23 million bond? That they don't think long term because they don't have the money to think long term. How do you feel about that? Well, I do think at times... The bond is no different than a mortgage on your house. You know, we, we couldn't, uh, most of us could not afford the house we have unless we had a mortgage. So at times, you do have to use that. Yeah, that but do system. you take out a loan to paint your house? Most I, people. No, most people don't. No, I agree. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I agree. The, the, but the whole, the whole issue is when I drive down the roads here, they're, they're really horrible. I mean, I, I, it's like walking, a, going down a washboard on most of the roads in this, this area. And they've gone, you know, they really need to be fixed. But a lot of that comes from what DOT's done, what, or lack of doing, uh, lack of foresight. We, you know, we have roads that uh, have heavy trucks on them. Go, go down Front Street, be, you know, where we have these trucks going back and forth from the, uh, the and that road was a design for that kind mm -hmm. of wear and tear and they what they repaved a year ago it's already but see this apart. is what i'm and I, and I know we're running out of time yeah. and i hope you'll come back before the primary because i've enjoyed talking with you today is but is that because we're not be, but government isn't staying on its priorities isn't focused and staying on its priorities it's outside its box well, too many well, times well and, and this is where we get these mandates that come either from the federal or the state uh, that said you know we have to provide this service we have to you know and you look at the social service programs you know they're talking about the health department the social uh, uh, social services department we are trying to do way I agree with you we do way too much and we need to stay focused on the basics and that's what I'm trying to run Our music's on. on but will you be one of those if when elected commissioner that is going to say I want to look at that department I want to look at those mandates 
And maybe I'm going to start pushing back on Raleigh. I can promise you this. There is nothing they do that I won't look at. I can promise you that there's nothing sacred. Whether it's law enforcement, education, social services, we need to look at everything and, and figure out what it is we want to do as a county. Dave Conklin running for New Hanover County Commissioner, and I hope we'll get you back maybe next week or as fast as we can before the primary. Enjoy talking with you today. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. Folks, we'll be right back. Coming up next is Tony McGee. We have lots more to talk about. Woody White at 8 o'clock, and then at 8.30, Rhonda Amorosa.